Let's talk about derivatives and rates of change. Now we're going to start off with a definition. We want to let f be a function on an interval containing some point a. And if x is not equal to a and is in the deriv and is in this interval, the difference quotient, and I want to highlight this here, uh, the difference quotient is defined to be the following, okay? We're basically going to take f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. So I hope when you see this, you immediately think, oh, this is like the slope of the secant line connecting x and a. Or really, it's connecting the points a f of a and x f of x. Okay? Now, we actually have two different versions of a difference quotient. Um, one of these different quotients uh, involves an increment h. So let me show you how this second definition of a difference quotient works. What we're going to do is we're really basically going to say, you know what, let's let x be equal to a plus h. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub in a plus h into x right here and into x right there. So when we do that, let's see what we get. We're going to have f of a plus h minus f of a divided by a plus h minus a, right? And then what you can see is, take a look at that denominator. In the denominator, we have a plus h minus a. So these a's sort of cancel each other out. And we end up with real the real difference quotient, which is f of a plus h minus f of a all divided by h. So both of these things correspond to a difference quotient. And both of these things correspond to the slope of the secant line. In this case, remember, my x was just equal to a plus h. All right. Some of you might be wondering, why do we have two different versions of the same idea? Um, this one looks more like a slope. So at first, students feel more comfortable looking at this. But this second one is the one that we really like to use. And it won't be so obvious why we like this version better until we get to section 2.1. So when we talk about the slope of a tangent line, to f of x at the point x equal to a, this slope is really going to be defined in terms of a limit. So remember, the slope of the tangent line is really the limit of the slopes of the secant lines. So really, I could say this is going to be the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a or the limit as h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. This is, of course, provided the limits actually exist. So I'm just going to write as a comment over here the slope of the tangent line is the limit of the slope of secant lines as x gets closer and closer to a. OK? So uh, let's look at an example together. Uh, this example one says, find the equation of the tangent line to f of x equal to x squared 
at x equal to 4 using each definition. So what we're going to do is we're going to use definition 1. And uh, I'm going to show you definition 1 right now. And then we'll work through definition 2 and actually write the equation of the tangent line together in class. All right. So we know that according to definition 1, we're going to have the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Now, in our case, um, uh, we can rewrite this as the limit as x goes to 4, because our a value is equal to 4 in this particular case. Uh, maybe I should change this x equal to 4, an a. And uh, our f of x in this case is x squared. And our f of a is going to be 4 squared, because we're going to plug in the 4 for a. All right. The denominator of this is going to be x minus 4, like so. So I could simplify this. Um, one thing that you'll notice is that the numerator is a difference of two squares. So we know how to factor a difference of two squares. When I factor the numerator, it's going to be x, x plus 4 times x minus 4, right? That's how you factor a difference of two squares. And then the denominator is going to be divided by x minus 4. So uh, I hope you could see that we could cancel one of the factors in the numerator with the denominator, and we're going to end up with the limit as x goes to 4 of x plus 4. At this point, because we've eliminated the 0 in the denominator, we can just plug in the value of 4 for x, and this is going to give us 8. Okay. So this is the slope of the tangent line. OK, great. Uh, again, as I said earlier, we are going to finish this example in class when we see each other later. Let's scroll down on the page, and let's scroll down to the definition of a derivative. So this definition is going to look very familiar to you. So when we look at the definition of a derivative, first of all, the derivative of f of x at a is denoted f prime of a, all right? And f prime of a has two possible definitions. The first one looks like this. It's the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. And you'll never guess what the second definition is. The second definition of f prime of a it's going to be the limit. As h goes to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a, all divided by h. So this is provided that the limits actually exist. Well, I hope these two definitions really look familiar to you, because I'm guessing that you would notice that the derivative f prime of a is the same as the slope of the tangent line to y equal to f of x at the point x equal to a. And it turns out that the um, the derivative is also the instantaneous velocity if your function was the position function. But we'll discuss that idea more in the future. All right, everybody. Let's work through some examples together in class later. Take care.